need I say more? Welcome to Rockline. Why, thank you. I mean, going back to the last time, the first time I ever met you was when you were at the Roxy. No, the Whiskey A Go Go. Whiskey, Whiskey A Go Go. And I was at a station locally, another station in the town. And uh, I was trying to break away from what I was doing. You were trying to do what you were doing. And we met at a, at a, uh, at a luncheon for some off-the-wall, ridiculous advertising people. I looked at you, you looked at me, and we were just bored to tears with it. And I knew at that moment that I loved you. <laughs> and then you put my name on Freak Out. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, that was back in the days when I used to wake up in time for lunch. <laughs> really? Frank Zappa, golly, how long has it been that you've been recording, Frank? Mm. Uh, the first Mother's album was released in 65. 65. And it's been going on and on and on and on and on. Yeah. There's some very wonderful people in the good old days. You had uh, Flo and Eddie, mm -hmm. Sugar Cane Harris, and uh, yeah. wow, you had John Luke Ponty. And you do all sorts of wonderful things. I did so many quotes about you. I, I wish, you know, I, I, you know, you're a solo person since 76, right? Yeah. But that's when the, the old mothers broke up. That's right. about the end of it. How, so how many albums do you think have you put out? 31. 31. Yeah, that's the real albums. The real and albums. And MGM repackaged 11. There's about 60 bootlegs. Well, when you say bootlegs, we mean bootlegs. That means people sitting in a concert with a cassette machine, taping the show, and then releasing it on a record label. Hmm. Releasing it on, on a regular record label? No. No, no. On, on, on a bootleg label. On a bootleg label. Yeah. But uh, uh, um, I thought that was pretty well under control. No, it's not. As a matter of fact, the bootleg problem as it applies to the work that I do is very much uh, out of control. And so the FBI is working on it for us. Mm. And we've supplied them with uh, examples of all the various things that we have found that have been bootlegged. And they've been checking up on uh, trying to find out where the things are coming from because as far as my material goes, it's a very big business. Really? I don't think that it's the work of just a couple of individual guys who went out and made a record for fun. It's some one or two people who are releasing vast quantities of material. Last year, 12 bootlegs in the last year. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't and aware one of, of them has all of the songs on the next album that's coming out in September. They've already got the stuff recorded live in concert before I can even release it on a record. And that makes me mad. I don't blame you for me. That's absolutely absurd. I wasn't aware of that. No. Uh, but it is a federal offense. It is. But I, I, I thought that the, the whole industry had gotten together and really had clamped down. But I'm, I'm so... I'm, well, we, the isn't industry didn't do anything to help me. Maybe they're clamping down on behalf of somebody else, but they haven't done anything to help You're me. You're not very fond of the uh, industry, are you? That's very true. That's very true. Once we'll talk about Mike Curb later, perhaps, maybe. Well, I don't want to single him out as okay. being an example of anything splendid. <laughs> anything splendid? All right. The lines here, the telephone lines that talk to Frank Zappa and have the questions coming out exactly like that are a toll free 800 421 3222. That's across the United States and uh, outside the country uh, and here in California. You can dial us direct or collect. We'll pick up the tab. Uh, area code 1213 520. Five thousand. It's got a couple of people from Albania calling in. Come yeah, on, you guys really. Never checked in with us. That's right, man. We got millions of people, but Albania has not checked in. I, know. I don't know. It's something about their politics or something like that. Um, God, uh, you get the new album. I saw something in the, in, in, in the local paper today. The new album that you got out now has got gives an opportunity for people to get five albums. Is that right? No, the way the new album is, uh, new album is a double album, and it's mm -hmm. called Tinseltown Rebellion. And you open it up, and you take the record out, and then on the sleeve, that tells you that if you like instrumental music, that uh, there are three albums that you can get by mail order only, which are, they're entitled Shut Up and Play Your Guitar, <laughs> Shut Up and Play Your Guitar Some More, and Return of the Sun of Shut Up and Play Your Guitar. These are all available by mail order only. And uh, we've already started getting orders for those. That's great. We're going to start taking calls right now. Are you ready to go pick up on uh, Jeff of Minneapolis? Is Jeff there? Yes. Hi, Jeff. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I was wondering um, how you felt about drugs and uh, how it affected your music. Well, I don't like drugs. I don't use drugs. I don't advise other people to use drugs. I think that drugs are very bad for you. And I think that if you... Stop and think about drugs for a minute. You'll find that, uh, trace it all the way back, it's coming from the government somewhere. And they're putting these drugs on the street to help keep you stupid so they can keep you under control. Remember, the business of government is the business of keeping people under control. It's the business of controlling the workforce 
so that the people who own lots and lots of stuff can keep what they own and you won't give them a bad time. So every time you get wasted and go grooving out someplace, just remember, somebody in an office someplace is rubbing his hands together and saying what a wonderful thing it is that you're so tore up that you'll never be able to think your way out of the stuff that they lay on you. Thank you for that call, Jeff. Joe of Seattle, how you doing? Joe, you there? Yeah. Talk away, Joe. Joe? Hi, Frank. Hi there, Joe. Frank, can you hear me now? We sure. Do. I wanted to ask you about what you think of this new wave rock scene now. In your new album, you write a few songs that kind of derogatize the whole thing. Well, the, the song that's in the album that you're talking about is Tinseltown Rebellion, and it's specifically about the new wave scene in Hollywood. And the reason that I chose to write a song about that is What's happening in Hollywood is really kind of pathetic because they have what they think are new wave clubs, but what goes on in them is this situation where the groups that play there are basically performing live in order to showcase themselves so that uh, a record company executive will come in there and pick them up and make them a star. And uh, what they're doing is very artificial, and that's what <coughs> that song is about. I've been to other new wave clubs and seen groups that I thought were very good, but. Most of what happens in Hollywood is totally fake. Got that? Thank you, Joe, for your call. Jim of Chicago, listening to uh, WL, listening through WLUP. Go ahead, the loop. Yeah, where did you ever get the idea for the song "Don't Eat That Yellow Snow"? I got it from a school teacher in Kansas. That's one of my favorite songs. I like that. You like that? Well, don't eat any of it. <laughs> and don't stick it up your nose either. Oh God. Thank you very much. Some of my favorite lyrics would be uh, out of the, uh, I just dropped these, uh, these bifocals. Oh, get your binoculars get back binoculars on, on, there. on Right, they look like they aren't. They? Out of the, um, who needs a piece car? I'm hippie and I'm trippy. I'm a gypsy on my own. I'll stay a week and get the crabs. I'll take a bus back home. I'm really just a pony, but forgive me because I'm stolen. Some great lyrics that you've given us over the years, man. The, the Jewish princess thing. What about it? What, what was the thing that went down with the, uh, uh, the uh, what was it? The, uh, the Anti-Defamation an anti League? Anti-Defamation League, yeah. Uh, apparently somebody called up and complained that uh, they felt that the song was in bad taste. And uh, they're entitled to their opinion, you yeah. know, but don't try and stifle the airwaves or keep my music off of the air because it irritates you. You can think it's in bad taste as all you want to, but there are a lot of people out there who want to hear the song, and there are also people who realize that there is such a thing as a Jewish princess. I mean, you're sticking your head in the sand if you pretend that Jewish princesses don't exist. Right. I mean, even people who aren't Jewish realize that there <laughs> are Jewish princesses. That's you don't even have to be married to one to know that they exist. Okay, let's play not the Jewish prince. Let's play Fine Girl by Frank Zappa here on the scintillating Zappa lyric. Fine Girl, you're on the rock line with the Beamer. Frank and I will be back to talk to you. We'll be looking for that call from, uh, from Albania because the Albanian people do want to get through. So you'll be listening, and uh, don't forget that the uh, rock line numbers are... 800-421-3222, toll free for the country and here in California and for Canada as well. 5205,000, area code 213, collect. Watch out, where the yellow snow. Watch out, where the huskies go. Don't you eat that yellow snow. Get back on the rock line with the Beamer and my guest in the studio, Frank Zappa. And we've got on the line, Frank, uh, Carrie of Jacksonville, who's uh, listening to us through uh, Rock 105. Carrie of Jacksonville, as far as we're concerned, you're calling from Albania, Okay. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I'd just like to say that I've heard Hendrix and Page, but I think Frank Zappa is the greatest and most unique guitar player of all. Well, and that's very nice of you to say so. Okay, thanks. And I'd like to know what the inspiration for you to write Bobby Brown is, and also how did you develop the term pluking? Uh, the term pluking was... Uh, came from Ike Willis. He and his friends used that expression. It was used around the recording studio at the time we were working on the album. And he has credit on the album for developing the term pluke. And as far as Bobby Brown goes, the story of Bobby Brown relates to the time that I was interviewed by two guys who were under the influence of their girlfriends who were women's liberationists. And apparently the girls had um, twisted these guys around to the point where uh, the whole idea of the interview was to come in there and get me. And um, they came in there with this real peculiar attitude, and they brought the girls with them, and they were trying to show off for their girlfriends. And they didn't get me, but uh, 
it came to my attention that there was a type of guy out there that would allow himself to be modified by women's liberation type people. And the song Bobby Brown is about the kind of a guy who falls for that kind of stupidity. Okay, thank you. We got Greg of Vermont, and Greg of Vermont is listening to us uh, through the Albany station, uh, WPYX, which is as close as we'll get to Albany, to mm -hmm. Albanian. That's right. Okay, Greg, go ahead. Hello, Frank. Hi there. I'm listening to you on uh, Fix 106 in Rutland, from Rutland, and I would just like to ask you, uh, what, you do, what do you think of uh, how the critics uh, think of you? Well, you have to understand what a critic does for a living. He has to fill up a certain amount of space in a publication, and it's his... You're listening to Rockline. Our toll-free number is 1-800-421-3222. In California, dial 213-520-5000. Uh, well, Kay, we got ourselves, um, Dorothy of San Francisco is... No, wait a minute. We just no, lost Greg of Vermont. No, that's very, that's bad. Well, I don't I know. I was going to tell him a very important thing, and because I use the word that refers to the rear end of the human anatomy, somebody pushed a button in there and took it off of the air. This is really childish. Hmm, is that what happened? That's what happened, oh, coming out of, of the dump, eh? Hey, you shouldn't be dumping things like that. Okay, well, we, Greg is gone, and we got Dorothy of San Francisco. I'll get to I'll ask him there. what he thought of the Beatles. Okay, and I'll ask him about Alice Cooper. Oh, there are two people up there. Oh, good. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Drew, good evening. Ah, this is great. Calm down, let's... Talk a little louder, please. Can you hear us now? Yeah, okay. kind of. Go ahead, Dorothy. Yes, I, okay, I want to know uh, where you found... This is Dorothy. I want to know where you found Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper appeared in my uh, basement one day with the rest of his band, and he was brought there by a girl named Christine Furka, who was one of the GTOs, and uh, she was a friend of his and brought him over to the house so that I could hear the group. All right, that's one question. What's the other one? Okay, hi. My name is Jane. I'm, I'm an opera in San Francisco, and I want to know what you think, think of the Beatles or what you thought of the Beatles. I didn't like them. Thank you very much. Do you know if it's coming around in the San Francisco Bay Area again? Eventually it will. Uh, it's going into distribution in, a, in about a month, and it's opening in the Pacific Northwest. And we're moving it area by area around the country, and we're distributing it ourselves. So soon it will come to San Francisco. Okay, thank you. Wasn't there something about the Beatles? And the, 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 you did a Beatles, Beatles, you know, a satire. Oh, the cover of We're Only In It For The Moment. Yeah, right. Yeah. And it was a... McCartney objected or something of that nature? No, it wasn't that he objected, but uh, what happened was the record company that we were with at that time was uh, really very nervous about doing those kind of things, and two or three other artists had already done uh, Sgt. Pepper parody covers, uh -huh. but they hadn't really done them right because they didn't go for every detail that was in the cover, and I wanted to do a total reversal on everything that was included in their covers, so we went to great extremes to perfect it. And uh, MGM was afraid to release it. And so I talked to McCartney on the phone, and I wanted to just straighten the thing out uh, directly between him and me. And, and he, it was like he was taking the phone and holding it away and going, what, you mean you talk business? You know, <laughs> just talk to my lawyer. <laughs> and so w once the lawyers got a hold of it, they held up the release of the album for 13 months. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And of course, uh, of we course, they made a lot of money doing that. Of course, and the mothers originally were supposed to be called the mothers, but somebody got a little panic about that, and they changed it to the mothers of invention. Yeah, they, they didn't like the idea of calling groups the mothers. Okay. Kenneth of Atlanta. Hi, Kenneth. Hi. Hi. Uh, Frank, uh, what is off the album, The Sheik Your Booty? What is your favorite song and why? What is my favorite song on the Shake Your Booty album? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, let's see. I think I like Your Mama the best. Yeah, I like that, too. Your mama. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Ken. I love getting uh, people from Jacksonville and, and Ken of Atlanta get that accent, which we don't hear out here too very often. we got somebody in the line uh, on the rock line. we got the George of Washington, D.C. George of Washington, D.C. on Q107. Hi. How you doing, Frank? Hi there. Uh, I'd like to ask you, is Frank Zappa your real name? Yes, it is. And where did you grow up? I haven't grown up yet, but I've lived in a lot of different places. I started off in Baltimore, Maryland, and uh, lived in Florida, and lived in Northern California and Southern California. 
Okay. Tom of Orange County, listen to KLOS. How you doing? Tom, you there? Frank Zappa? Yep. What's gotten into you? <laughs> what do you mean, what's gotten into me? I have, I have, I have one, one major question. All right, let's hear it. Okay. What made you start up Barking Pumpkin Records? Well, I thought it would be a good name for a record company, and somebody else just asked me a little while ago where I got the name, and my wife used to have a bad cough, and uh, that's where the name of the company came from. Did I answer it for you? I was at a concert of yours on, um, what was it, uh, New Year's, 77, and you were really upset at somebody. You, I couldn't quite catch what you were talking about, but a court thing. Oh, you mean the business with Warner Brothers and my former manager? That goes to trial in January. Eventually, it will be resolved. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to ask you something. Since we're talking about, uh, we mentioned the, 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 sc the scary part about uh, uh, record companies. I mean, this has been pretty much the case of the, throughout your recording career, right? I mean, just one after another. Lawsuits with record lawsuits companies. Lawsuits with record companies right. and hassles with record companies. Um, you're very individualistic. You're also, by the way, when you told everybody you were born in Baltimore, what do you place of a Mediterranean mixture? Mongrel. <laughs> mongrel, Mediterranean <laughs> mongrel. Is it, what is it? Greek? Italian, Italian, Greek, Arab, and French. The whole thing like that. Okay, I don't think we're going to have any more time right now to take any more calls, but we'll be back on the rock line with Frank Zappa. Don't forget the numbers, and we'll go on to the off-the-wall calls. Now, what has happened to Frank Zappa? Who is Frank Zappa? Call us in just a little while. The college line with uh, the Beamer, B. Mitchell Reed, and my guest Frank Zappa. And I was asking Frank just before the break about the, uh, the fact of the matter that throughout his storied career, it's been one of hassles with record companies being scared. Why are they scared? I mean, you're just Frank Zappa. You're doing some great things. It's not a matter of them being scared. It's the fact that they're dishonest mm. and the fact that I don't like to bend over. I'm not a bending over kind of a guy. Yeah. And if somebody does something to me that I don't like, I fight them. Okay, we got that. We got Rick of George on the line. Hi, Rick. How's it going? It's That's Rick Montgomery. Uh, Frank. Yeah, Rick. I just want to tell you, for once, that uh, you're an inspiration to originality. And I'd like to ask you a few things. Uh, one, what was the inspiration for the song Dynamo Hum? Well, you're going to find this a little bit hard to believe, but it came from just about every science fiction movie that has a mad scientist in it. Because whenever... Uh, you see the scene in the laboratory, they always get this noise in the background. It's like the, the distant hum of a dynamo, you know? And it's built in to the, uh, the ethos of that kind of entertainment. And I pondered upon this matter for quite some time and decided that what if dynamo hum was a girl's name and that's where the trouble started? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Two is do you try to be a nonconformist? No. No, he doesn't try to be, just is. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank Bob you. Bob of New York City, is that right? WPLJ? Right. How you doing, Bob? Pretty good. How are you? Okay. I was wondering, Frank, are you going to be making any movies, any more movies? Oh, I'm going to get Baby Snakes into distribution first before I tackle something else. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Much. What about 200 Motels? Is that going to ever come back again? No, it's back all the time. It's, yeah. you know, one of those things they show at midnight shows at the Fox Venice. Fox and, Venice you know, over here in L.A., yeah. Yeah, and it really? shows all over the place, but... Mm. Uh, okay. We're uh, taking callers here at uh, area code uh, 213-520-5000 for my guest Frank Zappa. That's for uh, anywhere over there in Canada or in California. Call us collect and across the United States. Otherwise, it's toll free, 1-800-421-3222. We just talked to uh, Rich of Jacksonville, and uh, we'll be waiting for some really swinging, really crazy off the road. I wanted to look for something here. Let's see if I got the record review. Yeah, here it is. Well, I we're punching up the next things here. For people who don't know what we're doing, we punch up calls through our computer, and uh, there's a computer in our control room. I've lost my place here, Frank. I had something about you I wanted to ask about. And uh, as the calls come through, they put them over here to me in the studio. Oh, right, here it is. When you're traveling, this is out of a record review of, uh, I guess, February of 1980. When you're traveling, you're able to check out the different places you go. A lot of people say that you just check into a holiday ho in here and a holiday in there. And you said, well, you do, but it all depends on how alert you are. You can check into a Holiday Inn and do nothing but sleep. I go there and make use of it. I've noticed that Holiday Inns have physically deteriorated over the last 15 years. We don't stay in them anymore. We try to avoid them as much as possible. The history of rock and roll is almost like the history of the deterioration of the cheap workmanship in the original construction of the Holiday Inns. Every year you can go back to the same hotel and watch things fall apart. 
It's like being a part of history till it gets to the point it's so disgusting that you don't want to stay there anymore. We switch over to Howard Johnson some places. <laughs> right. That's pretty wild. Well, we have been known to stay at Ramadas, too. <laughs> we, do we got Rich of Jacksonville there? Yes, too. Hi, Rich. How you doing? Just fine. I'd like to know, Frank, um, what were your major influences when you were growing up? And also, um, I've been listening to you for a long time, and I really dig where you're coming from. And I've been, so I'd like to know, would you like to see some original charts sometime where I can get hold of you to send me some? Um, well, I'll tell you what, the address of the uh, office is on the album. You can send them to the office. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, Rich? Sure. Thank you, Rich. Hey, let's go to another song where we take some more calls. Just give you those numbers, have some off the wall <laughs> calls. We're going to have a thing for the young sophisticated. Here's Frank Zappa. <laughs> December, right. I'm just thinking about, you know, of uh, Robbie and, 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 and Manzarek in their 40s, uh, particularly Ray. Uh, Robbie's not, but Ray is. I mean, these guys are just as young as can be, and I love it. Let's get a Russell of Amarillo. Hi, Russ. Howdy. How's it going? How you doing? I'm oh, pretty good. I sure do enjoy your uh, orchestral favorites, and I was wondering if you're going to introduce any more albums like that. Well, as a matter of fact, we got a phone call today from the man who uh, is in charge of the Krakow Orchestra in Poland, and he offered uh, to give my manager an airplane ticket to fly over there and talk things over, and he also said that... Uh, They'd give us as much rehearsal time as we need to prepare the music. We also had a deal going with the Detroit Symphony. There was a potential concert there in November. Unfortunately, the D Detroit Symphony could only give me 14 hours of rehearsal. They didn't have any more time available. But they're still interested in doing it, and they've uh, reserved between May 10th and May 20th of next year for rehearsal. The Chicago Symphony had called the office and asked for scores. I sent scores to them. And on the 12th of June, I'm going to Buffalo to have the Buffalo Orchestra read through some of the music because they're interested in playing it. So within the next year, there's going to be another orchestral album and uh, probably a double. Okay. Mike of San Francisco, you're, li you're on the rock line with Bima Reed and Frank Zappin. You're listening to us over at KSFX. Go ahead. Uh, Frank? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he admires your guitar playing quite a bit on Hot Rat. And uh, what do you think of his guitar playing? I like it. But not with Yes so much. I think he's the guitar player on a uh, record uh, called uh, Claremont Lake, which is the B side of White Bicycle by a group called Tomorrow. And I think that's him playing on there. I think that's my favorite work that I've heard him do. Right, thanks a lot. Thank okay. you a lot. Kevin in San Jose, you're listening to us through KSFX. How you doing? I'm pretty good. Uh, hi, Frank. Actually, I'm from Fremont. I talked to you once before in Sacramento last year. I was almost as fr uh, flustered as I am now, but I do have one question. I was expecting three particular songs on Tinseltown that aren't on there. Uh, what they are is Jumbo Go Away, Charlie's Enormous Mouth, and Conehead. And I was wondering, uh, how come they're not on there? And are there any plans for them to be on You Are What You Is? They are going to be on You Are What You Is. Uh, that album will be released about the second week in September. It's all finished. It's all mixed and everything. All we got to do is get the cover ready, and that one's ready to come out of shoot number five. <laughs> okay, Kevin, thank you. I, I don't think we can take any more calls this particular time. We'll be back, though, with Frank Zappa and Rockline and B. Mitch Rito. I'll ask Frank a little later on about New Wave quotes. New Wave in the 60s, were you one of the new considered New Wave then, about, about New Wave today? But these are questions that are upcoming. Don't forget to call Frank Zappa. On Rockline, 1-800-421-3222, toll free. Across the U.S. of A. and California, outside the country, it's dialed to record collect. Area code 213-520-5000. Old Frank Zappo, getaway music here for a minute. Frank Zappa, go ahead, Lynn. Yes, I was wanting to ask Frank, is your father Mr. Green Jeans on Captain Kangaroo? No, his real name is Lumpy Branham. <laughs> Did you get that? He was. Okay. And are you going to be here in Florida soon? Yes, we're going to be there in the fall. We're definitely putting Florida on the tour for the fall. Okay. Bill of Detroit, uh, listen to us for Rip. How you doing? Hi. Hi. I'm real happy to be able to speak with you. I'd like to ask Frank a, a question regarding his, his views on uh, the drug scene and the issue he was raising earlier about the uh, potential for control of the uh, people in this country by drugs and the potential for governmental usages by that. What I'm interested in is, where, how, how, do you have a new age view for us? Could you share with us your ideas about 
uh, possibilities for dealing with these kinds of issues in our, in our culture. Well, the first thing that you ought to do is stop using drugs and start paying attention to what's really going on and stop believing what everybody tells you in the newspapers and on television and read between the lines and get it through your head that the best thing that you can be if you want to stay uh, alert as an American today is be cynical. Cynicism is a positive value. And the more cynical you are, the better off you're going to be. You hear that, man? That's pretty. And also that question was asked uh, earlier on of Ray Manzarek as well. And Ray has something to say about that, too. Tim of Seattle. Seattle at uh, KSIW. You're on the rock line with B. Mitch Reed and Frank Zappa. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I asked you a question. Uh, that song, Deep Purple? Yeah. Smoke on the Water. I yeah. uh, want to know if it was one of your members that burned down the motel. Well, what that song is about is not about a motel that's being burned down. It's about um, a casino which is in Montreux, Switzerland. The casino had a recording studio built into it, and Deep Purple was recording there. They had their equipment in the building, and it, the building also had a uh, concert hall that held about 2,000 people, and we were playing there. And during the show, some stupid person in the audience shot a, a bottle rocket up into the ceiling, which was covered with some kind of rattan stuff, and it stayed up there, and it started a fire, and the fire uh, burned the entire building down. And uh, they just rebuilt it recently, and it's now open again. But that's what Smoke on the Water is about. Okay, thank you, Tim of Seattle. Hey, Andy of Ohio, you're on the rock line here. Speak All to right, you. how you doing, Frank? Hi, Andy. <clears throat> I guess my question is, uh, well, first off, I saw you two years ago here in Columbus, and it was an excellent show. Thank you. And uh, you played some material that was supposed to be on Lather that never showed up, you know, because of the, uh, the uh, lawsuit and everything. And I guess my question is, has any of the stuff that was supposed to be on Ladder originally, has it ever showed up anywhere else? And uh, your new record company, you know, your division of Phonogram now, right? No. We have a pressing and distribution deal with CBS, and the name of the label is Barking Pumpkin. Okay. Well, my question would be, um, do you anticipate having better relations with this record company than you have with <laughs> Warner's? Well, since the record company, the, the way the deal is structured now, is totally different than any of the other deals that I've had. Um, basically, all CBS has to do is press the records and ship them out the door. And all the rest of the record company business, like the promotion and all the uh, nuts and bolts work of it, is taken care of out of my office. I don't have to deal with any of the normal record company uh, stupidity. I get to do it all myself. In other words, it's your artistic control and everything like that. Right. That's fantastic. Okay, Andy of Ohio, 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 Ohio. Andy, go ahead. That was Andy. That was Andy. I'm sorry, Mike of New York. I'm sorry. How you doing? I was, I'm Hi, Mike. Mike. Frank, I'd like to, I'd like to ask you, what, uh, what, either single person or group has had the greatest, say, influence on your music? If I had to pick one. I think the easiest thing to do is refer you to the list on the inside of the Freak Out album. There's about 163 names in there. And since the time that that album came out 15 years ago, I think that I would have only added two or three more to that list. And it's a pretty comprehensive list of people that have affected me either in a positive or negative way. Well, there's, there's one phrase on that album that uh, has pops into my mind you know, when I find myself in certain situations. And it's one of my favorite songs. And plastic people, oh baby, you're such a drag. Well, I can understand why that would uh, pop up in everyday life in the United States. You know, I would like to mention that I've just written an article for Newsweek. I don't know where they're going to publish it, but they have this uh, section in there called My Turn. And uh, I thought that I should uh, send them my idea of a, of a turn. And it sort of deals with this topic that you're discussing. And the, the article is about the quality of life in the United States. And basically what it says is, we as a nation have decided to choose cheese as a way of life. And we always seem to opt for the cheesiest of whatever is available because we now believe thoroughly whatever the accountants tell us. And all of our decisions that relate to the quality of our lives are based on the bottom line. And that's the big mistake. And it's those plastic people that you're thinking about are the ones that have, that have bought that idea and live by it. And if you can just remember that you're going to have a better life with more beautiful things in it for you, if you realize that the, the best things 
that you can consume are not necessarily the things that you have to buy. Thank you very much. We'll be back with uh, Frank Zappa and more news about next week here on The Rock Line in just a little bit. The U.S. to go. I mean, it's been a lot of kicks. I want to thank you for being here. Frank Zappa has been my guest. Frank, by the way, has got a new studio LP, as he told you earlier during the show, coming out in September before his national tour. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And he's promised to come back to answer more of your questions right here on The Rock Line. We're going to have the doors back, too. So we'll be looking forward to that. Now, if you did not get through to any of our guests tonight, I want you to send me a postal card with your question or comment on it. You can send anything particular pertaining to me, to me, Beamer, or to Rockline, Rockline, P.O. Box S, Tarzana, California, 91356. I'll repeat that, Rockline, P.O. Box S, like in Sam, Tarzana, California, 91356. And the letters are already pouring in from all of you wonderful people out there, so keep it up. And it's a lot of fun hearing from you, and uh, your mail will get through to the artists that you're addressing them to.